Uh, we love axioms. Like I said earlier, there's no such thing as cheap food. You are what you eat or you are what you digest. A lot of these axioms are really true. What people don't realize is w that you vote with your fork. You know, that, that's really, you're voting. When you buy food, you're voting for that type of food production. It's my friend, Will Winter, a veterinarian from Minnesota and someone involved in the traditional food movement. Uh, he's moved more into trying to provide healthy food to people and, and influence the way animals are raised. Works with Thousand Hills Cattle Company, a lot of other individuals, lectures a lot. Uh, a lot of fun, this guy, and, uh, and very uh, well-read and knowledgeable about the connection of everything from soil to human health. Uh, definitely one of the people we should be listening to. Uh, give this a listen. It's just a fun clip uh, that, that connects a few things um, and come back. More's, more's on its way. What you eat affects things like global warming more than what you drive. You know, you shouldn't drive a Hummer probably or, you know, some big honking thing if you don't need to. Uh, on the other hand, what you're eating affects us. And here's why. When cattle are in a feedlot, uh, it takes somewhere between 10 and 14 pounds of beautiful golden corn just to make one pound of meat. What a waste. Somebody had to grow that corn. Somebody had to cut it, cultivate it, plant it, plow it, all this stuff. Somebody had to haul it in a semi or a barge to the feedlot, and then we got all this toxic waste as a result of it for nothing. For us, grass-fed meat, like from ruminants, and we can talk about pigs and chickens too, because they should be out in nature, eating what God intended. But that is an efficient machine. We basically call it free food from Mother Nature. Ruminant animals eating grass that we cannot eat, turning it into food that we can eat, is free food from Mother Nature. Grass sequesters more carbon out of the atmosphere. See, humans have put too much CO2 up in the air. And what Al Gore forgot to tell us in his beautiful movie is that the way we get the CO2 back out is to put organic matter back down into the soil. Just one or two percent more organic matter in the soil would sequester all the nasty carbon that we've put up there. Let's put it back in the earth where it belongs. What does that better than grass? Nothing. Grass is never plowed in general. Uh, you know, nature hates open soil. It'll cover, she'll cover up open soil almost immediately if there's a landslide or a mudslide or a fire. Uh, what grows up? Weeds. Instantly, it's a band-aid. It's a patch because nature is smart. Nature knows that we don't want that runoff. So when we have grass, we can take this marginal farmland. Marginal means sometimes that it's on a hill. So here we have this farmer plowing it up. Big old rain comes up, and then what color is the Mississippi River? Minnesota River looks like my, my latte because that's a farm moving down there. What do they say in the Mississippi? A farm goes by about every hour, a 40-acre farm. Bye-bye, there's your topsoil. We don't lose topsoil. If we had grass farmers like we should in Minnesota, we predict we're going to need about 2,000 to 5,000 more grass farmers just in the next few years to keep up with this uh, skyrocketing demand for healthy grass-fed meat, the river would look like gin. It would be this beautiful crystal clear river because we would not have the topsoil. And then the invisible things that you can't see, like the pesticides and the, the runoff from uh, all, the, all, you know, I won't even mention all, we call them sides, C-I-D-E-S, you know, herbicide, fungicide, pesticide. Uh, there's, you can't see them. You can't see what really kills you that's in the river, but they're not going to be in there either. So you can swim, you can drink it, you can eat fish out of it. Here I live in Minnesota, a fishing state, you're not allowed to eat fish out of the river because they have too much agricultural pesticides in the water. And unfortunately, uh, I have a magazine called The Ecologist. It's an amazing magazine. There's a headline that says, the greatest mistake of humans in hi the history of human beings, agriculture. And agriculture is the number one source of pollution on the planet.